What goes around comes around. Sometimes it comes back tenfold. Greetings, investigators. My name is Detective Sins, and welcome to another installment of Synopsins. Today, we're covering a psychological thriller movie from 2015 titled The Gift. Watch out for spoilers, and let's get into the video. A married couple, Robin and Simon, moved all the way from Chicago to California to start a new life. Upon arriving, they check the view of their new mid-century modern building that they will be calling home. They then decide to visit a furniture store and get the items they need. Simon, who is busy paying for his purchases, is greeted by a man named Gordo. As it turns out, Gordo was Simon's old schoolmate. After exchanging phone numbers, Robin and Simon say their goodbyes. Simon admits to Robin that speaking with Gordo makes him feel a little awkward because he doesn't recognize him at first. After Simon leaves to his new office the next day, Robin takes out the garbage and gets to know her new neighbors, Lucy, Ron, and their adorable baby. Lucy says that she'll invite Robin over whenever they have free time, and Robin agrees. Robin is in the shower when the doorbell rings. When Robin opens the door, she discovers a bottle of wine and a letter from Gordo. Gordo arrives at the house the next day while Simon is at work. Gordo greets Bojangles, Simon and Robin's dog. Gordo hands her a glass cleaner and a list of local contacts such as gardeners and plumbers. Robin gladly takes it and allows Gordo to look around the house. Robin tells Gordo to stay until Simon arrives so that they can eat dinner together. They chat after eating, though it's more of a one-sided conversation by Gordo. He talks about Simon who used to be class president and who would use the slogan Simon Says to achieve everything he wanted. Gordo also mentions how Simon Says still applies now, considering Simon's success, which includes his family, home, and work. And that makes Robin and Simon uncomfortable. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm just imagining Simon having sex with Robin and having this Yoda accent going, Bend over, Simon says. Anyways. Simon invites Robin to a party at his new office the next night. Simon's co-worker, Kevin, introduces Simon to his wife, Duffy, as well as Danny McDonald and his wife. Simon then shows Robin his new office in the middle of the party. Unlike Robin, who respects Gordo's action, Simon regards it as trespassing. While writing Weirdo on the fridge, Simon recalls that Gordo was called the Weirdo Gordo by other students during their school days. While relaxing after a morning run, Robin notices Gordo coming over. After thanking Gordo for the fishes that he brought them, Robin invites him in for tea. As he walks in, he notices the word Weirdo on the fridge. Gordo is completely silent for a little while before leaving Robin's house without saying goodbye. Lucy, Ron, Kevin, and Duffy join Simon and Robin for dinner. Simon explains that despite seeing the offensive writing, Gordo called them hours later to ask them to have dinner at his house. They are advised not to go there by Lucy, Ron, Kevin, and Duffy, but Robin believes Gordo is a good person, so they only warn Simon and Robin to be careful. Simon and Robin visit Gordo's house and are astounded by how magnificent it appears. Gordo welcomes them with a glass of wine and some water for Robin. Gordo received a call that forced him to leave the two alone. Either Gordo trusts them that much or he's just naive and stupid. Or is it? Simon is very interested in learning more about Gordo, so he walks upstairs and inspects the rooms. Just as Gordo opens the door, Simon and Robin return to the living room. Simon asks Gordo about his job and what call was so important that he had to leave his guest. Gordo remains quiet. Gordo then told them of his divorce and her ex-wife taking custody of their children. Simon instructs Robin to wait for him in the car while he speaks with Gordo. When alone, Simon just tells Gordo to never come back to his house anymore. Look, as much as I despise Simon for being a dick of a friend, I don't blame him. Like, imagine your best friend just recently broke up with his girlfriend, and then he got close with your girlfriend. Like, man, I'd be annoyed as hell. 
Annoyed by Simon, Gordo poisoned the koi fish he had given them. Simon gets a call from Robin and he tells his wife not to touch the water in the pool. Upon arriving home, Robin tells him that Bojangles is missing. I think we have a prime suspect here. Simon drives to Gordo's house angrily, but is puzzled when the original owner of the house opens the door. As it turns out, they are the real owners of the house. Gordo merely acted as if it was his own when the real owners went on vacation. Simon immediately calls the police to report his missing dog, but the cops are unable to help them because it is a minor matter. And just like every modern turn of events, they decided to take matters into their own hands. The only difference is they didn't use crowdfunding and spam their social media. Robin hears a noise and walks through the front door, where she discovers Bojangles has returned. Simon is certain that Gordo is toying with them. Robin collects the letters from the mailbox in the morning and brings them to the house after she finishes her exercise. Her eyes are drawn to the red letter, sent by Gordo. Robin and Simon read the letter, and Robin asks about the meaning of bygones be bygones. Simon views it as a fluff and tells Robin not to worry. Robin hears something from their room as she waits for Simon, who is working while preparing breakfast for herself. She checks it, but her heart starts to race, and she passes out. The next day, Robin wakes up to find Simon already waiting for her. Simon confronts her about the pills she used to take before they moved to Chicago. Robin, on the other hand, has a strong suspicion that Gordo is involved in the incident from yesterday. Robin asks Simon to apologize and make peace with Gordo. Simon refuses to apologize because he feels no guilt in the past or present. Again, you may think he's arrogant, but I'm actually with Simon on this one. Little fucker think he can mess around with my family? Fly off! That being said, Simon feels bad about raising his voice, so he apologizes to Robin and promises to put all of these behind them. Time passes and Robin is finally pregnant after months of trying, and their marriage appears to be going well. Until one day, Lucy tells Robin that a man has been following them the entire time. Robin notices that he is Gordo, and she tries to approach him, but Gordo walks away. Simon and Robin throw a baby shower at their house. Robin goes for a walk with Joan, Simon's sister, and inquires more about Gordo. Joan explains that it was claimed that Simon and his friend Greg discovered Gordo in a car being molested by an older student, which led everyone to believe Gordo was gay. A very weird, interesting piece of information, but an information nonetheless. Robin enters Simon's home office and examines his desk where he discovers two files. The first offers information about Gordo, while the second contains information of Danny McDonald, the other finalist for the job that Simon is hoping to get. Robin then goes online to search up Greg's identity and discovers that he is a chiropractor. She schedules a meeting with him and begins questioning him about what happened between Simon and Gordo. Greg initially refuses to answer her questions, then eventually admits that Simon made up the story about Gordo being molested since he was a bully who often attacked Gordo. Gordo's father attempted to burn him alive because he thought he was gay, resulting in his father's arrest. Robin confronts Simon about the evidence she discovered that day as she enters the house. He sarcastically claims that he was unaware that Gordo's father attempted to murder him. Simon also had a strict father, but he learned to fend for himself, unlike Gordo. To Simon, his conscience is guilt-free. Simon hasn't cared about anyone since his father was harsh with him, but he has fought and believes he has done nothing wrong. He begins to make a remark about Robin taking pills, and she slaps him, claiming that he is just as much of a bully today as he was before. Simon afterwards apologized to her and stated that he conducted a background check on Gordo to ensure their safety. Simon visits the bar where Gordo is working, Simon apologizes, but Gordo tells him it's too late. Simon refuses to accept that fact and begins hitting Gordo, threatening to destroy him if he approaches his family again. Bro, this is so backwards. Gordo should be the one throwing punches. What the hell is this stupid fucking scene? Sin! Simon eventually gets the job, so he throws a party at his home to celebrate. 
again. While they are having fun during the party, someone breaks the house's glass. They mistakenly believe the man is Gordo, but he is actually Danny McDonald. He is upset with Simon after revealing that Simon fabricated information about him, which cost him not only the promotion, but also his current job. When the police sirens approach, Danny begs to be let go. Simon gives him a thoughtful look before allowing him to go. Robin then decided it's the perfect time to go into labor. Robin gives birth to a healthy baby boy. Kevin calls Simon and informs him that their bosses are aware of the information Simon fabricated on Danny, and so he was fired on the spot. Simon returns to Robin's room for a moment to check how she's doing, and just as he is about to leave, she tells him that she doesn't want to go back home with him because of all the drama and chaos he's created. When Simon returns home, he discovers a large wrapped parcel. There's a baby bassinet and three numbered boxes within. The first gift contains a house key, revealing how Gordo has gotten in and out from their house. The second gift contains a tape of Simon teasing Gordo. I'm Gordo the weirdo. The third gift contains a DVD with recorded footage of Simon and Robin eating and sleeping. Then there's a film of Robin fainting, followed by Gordo bringing Robin onto the bed, petting her, and waving to the mirror while wearing a monkey mask. The video abruptly ends, leading Simon to believe Gordo raped Robin. Gordo visits Robin in the hospital with flowers to congratulate her on her baby while Simon is at home. Gordo looked awfully bruised and Robin suspects that Simon was the culprit. Simon returns to the hospital and spots Gordo entering an elevator, but he is unable to stop him. Gordo calls Simon, who is looking for him in the parking lot. He demands to know if Gordo committed the crime that Simon believed he did. Gordo initially denies it, but later admits that he may have done so. It's all in the eyes. You see what happens when you poison other people's minds with ideas? Gordo says before Simon ends the call. He's still unsure about whether the baby is his or Gordo's. Robin is holding the baby and glares with displeasure at Simon. Simon slumps against the wall and softly weeps, knowing that his entire life has been destroyed. Gordo looks at Simon for a brief moment before leaving and pulling the sling off his arm. His mission to ruthlessly end Simon's life is now fulfilled. A tragic story, but one that's not too far off from reality. Be careful of who you mess with. Those with the warmest smiles can have the most twisted ideas. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button down below. Subscribe if you want to see more content just like this and ring that bell to get notified whenever we post a new video. Sin investigators, you are dismissed.